in this section we're going to, to have a look at fake news mass mobilization and unrest and whether some of the recent insights from evolutionary psychology can help us maybe understand some of these mechanisms and potentially help us to make sense of them so why do people obey um, we already saw some possible answer to that in the previous section where we looked at the influence of disease stress but then it also asks you know like um, you know raises all sorts of questions within a system where people tend or seem to obey but yet they share fake news for example you know like so we have uh, a double paradox you know which goes back to the observations by that French student 500 years ago and at the same time with a modern environment we also have some dynamics that seem to be rather odd in a way why would people obey but then share for example hostile fake news first of all we have to get back to this game I hope you remember last week the little uh, illustration of the dove and the hawk game and the evolution of stable strategies where a peaceful and a, a dominant strategy can coexist depending on some uh, trade-offs in terms of the costs and benefits and so what this suggests is that within a population depending on the costs there can be these kind of equilibria where both a peaceful and an aggressive strategy can coexist together and and both strategies are present in a population and this is something that has been looked at within the context of social dominance orientation so the belief that there are uh, legitimate social hierarchies which then lead to all sorts of hierarchy enhancing um, ideologies and behaviors that support a system and undermine others that might try to improve the situation so this is work by um, Jonas Kunst and, and colleagues where they try to look at the extent to which the conditions of economic inequality and the presence of violence in, in an environment could explain why people engage in activities that actually support the inequality and keep that system in place the the interesting question here is if if you look at it from um, evolutionary hi hierarchical perspective if you have the opportunity to control others then you will if you have the fighting ability you have the coalitional strength to um, control others to suppress others you probably are going to do this if you are exploited by the system but you don't have the the coalitional strength to change the system in your favor you probably in order to reduce the the costs of fighting you will probably obey and um, you know like fit into the system so this is you know like the the whole argument about these evolutionary stable uh, systems where two strategies that are you know like hostile to each other can coexist and what uh, Jonas Kunst and colleagues showed was that it is an internalization of these economic and situational situations that most likely explains why individuals then behave in these um, you know like hierarchy enhancing ways and hierarchy supporting ways yeah so if you are socialized into a system that has high economic inequality and relatively high levels of violence it's not so much uh, a normative expectation but rather the internalization of the system that which then reproduces all sorts of other behaviors that support 
this hierarchical system and lead to a continuation of these conditions that that um, create this system in the first place right so it is a rather uh, dystopian view on 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 human society in to the extent that people start to adapt and internalize these systems and then reproduce them as long as they as they don't have the the ability to successfully challenge the system and this is where fake news comes in and provides an interesting twist from an evolutionary perspective fake news is all over the place at the moment and it the interesting question is why do why would people want to send fake news that they know it is fake and often is hostile but portrays others in very unfavorable uh, ways and you know like undermines the the credibility of individuals and social institutions so people have argued maybe this is um, a strategy by leaders in order to persuade others or you know like to manipulate others but recently um, Michael Bank Peterson and, and colleagues they have argued that it is potentially actually a different strategy that is playing this that is taking place here so this is a paper that was literally just published um, a couple of weeks ago reviewing some of the of the evidence drawing upon some of the earlier writings in, in political science as well in political science people have talked about the logic of hostile rumors typically what hostile rumors and and therefore these hostile rumors in a fake news environment um, entail is that there is an evil enemy the enemy is strong and the enemy is about to attack so from an evolutionary perspective the best strategy right now probably would be let's run right because you know there's somebody evil there the ev that that group is really strong and it's about to attack you right but this actually becomes important because if you have a group that is marginalized disenfranchised and ready to fight you can actually activate these individuals to fight to support you right so the argument here is the this mass mobilization through fake news can be seen as a coordination effect rather than a manipulation effect and in a different project um, the Danish group around um, Michael Bank Peterson and, and Lena Ero they they developed a new scale which they called need for chaos I'm not too sure about the name but it captures quite nicely a couple of very destructive tendencies where people report that they get a kick out when natural disasters strike in foreign countries uh, a belief that social institutions are rotten to the core that they fantasize wiping out uh, most of humanity so that only a small group of people can start all over thinking about society and and trying to burn it down um, and you know like this kind of typical aggression item sometimes I just feel like destroying beautiful things and combined with this idea that there's uh, moral rel relativism so there's no right or wrong in the world I can do whatever I want so this is a this is a they call it need for chaos it's an individual difference variable that is relatively stable and now they de they demonstrated in a number of studies recently that this need for chaos is correlated quite highly quite consistently with status seeking traits such as social dominance orientation um, status driven risk taking so people willing to take risk in order to increase their social status uh, also concepts like psychopathy that you probably have heard or about already in other courses but interestingly it's not strongly correlated with a competitive jungle worldview but importantly it is also strongly correlated 
to loneliness so people at the margins of social groups and to low social status so people who are marginalized within the current system and furthermore it is also correlated with a decrease of support or for policies or initiatives that help others so supporting others supporting institutions that help others at the same time it is correlated positively with idealism that benefits the self and a very strong correlation with the view that that there is no meaning in the current environment in the current world and so what this now shows is that these individuals that that um, follow this kind of ideology this need for chaos tend to be marginalized um, lonely individuals with the ambition to rise through the social system so by undermining the social system you actually would have a chance because you're on the margin of the system to potentially rise uh, and increase your social position and they did some very interesting uh, range of interesting studies where they looked at for example the motivation for sharing rumors about democrats um, or republicans and specifically you know like whether it would hurt corrupt democrats and it would hurt corrupt republicans and th the interesting thing here is that they they looked at the impact separately for republicans and democrats so even though um, you might be a democrat but if you're high on this need for chaos it doesn't actually matter you will share fake news you know like cr um, hostile news about democrats if you think it will actually hurt people at the top of the democratic party right so it doesn't matter so much that you're a member of the party you want if you're high on this need for chaos you want to undermine the party if you're a republican uh, of course you want to hurt um, these corrupt democrats anyway regardless of whether you're high or low for need for chaos but the same process also happens in among republicans so again democrats if you're a democrat you obvious obviously are more interested in getting rid of these corrupt republicans but if you are a republican you typically would want to protect your your party right but not if you're high on need for chaos if you're high on need for chaos you are going to share information that's going to hurt other republicans because implicitly this will open this will undermine the system and will open chances for you to rise through um, the social ranks so the the argument here is that these dynamics you know like marginalized um, disenfranchised individuals that are ready for violent action are now mobilized mobilized and are mobilized through these fake news so that's why we have these scenes um, in recent weeks where uh, radical protesters for example Trump supporters um, paint spray um, peaceful protesters and then in turn these peaceful protesters organize themselves and, and specific individuals within that group uh, start to fight back so what you can see here is um, a mobilization of in-group members that are marginalized have high ambition for um, social status so you know like they're, they're highly competitive and they want to rise through the system but the system is is not allowing them so the best option for them is to actually undermine the system so in a way you can think about it again in terms of you know some of the behaviors of some politicians whether you know like even though it seems counterproductive at, at the first look it can make sense if you think that these behaviors mobilize your constituency a hardcore core constituency that will act on your behalf in order to challenge the system and keep you 
potentially then therefore in power. So coming back, um, there are stable strategies. Um, so you can have doves and hawks in a social system depending on the, the um, risk and, and benefit trade-offs. Overall, cost conflict is costly and so obedience can be adapted, which comes back to the puzzling questions that Etienne um, asked in, in 1532. Why do people actually obey leaders and why don't they just overthrow leaders? Um, because this obedience can be adaptive. And the some of the uh, current dynamics that we see with uh, the sharing of hostile fake news can be seen as an example of status competition from a evolutionary psych perspective and it can be seen as an opportunity for mass mobilization to activate in-group members that are ready for violence right so it aims to undermine the current system and the social system by individuals that are motivated to actually increase their social status and this again can be exploited by specific political leaders. <laughs>